Hello and welcome back to the Sword of Truth podcast, the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with an extremely fortunate and unforeseen run-in with Craft Brew on the side. <laughs> I'm Jade. And I'm Nate, and on this episode we are giving you the password to chapter 50 of Blood of the Fold. And that password is... Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Because it was Halloween. I mean, some of you might not uh, celebrate that where you're from. But yeah, could be. Yes, we do very, very much. We love it. Uh, it's my personal favorite holiday. Not so much of a Christmas guy, although I am a big fan of turkey. Uh, Halloween, I get candy. And actually, last night, beer too. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Our next door neighbor was like, here's candy for the kids. And then he's like, hey, adults. And he holds up this 20-pack this, uh, of Bud Light. And we're like, yeah, fuck yeah best house on the block it was very nice and i appreciated it although i did say to our friend that i felt like i was 15 sneaking beers from a garage again because it was warm bud light (laughs) uh and i would not drink that normally uh, at this point but it was free and i was trick-or-treating so why not but we were walking down the road yeah so it was it was a little bit questionable but i don't care it's whatever technically illegal where we live but it's fine (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, before we get into the episode, I wanted to tell you guys just a little bit more about Four Acre Freedom. Four Acre Freedom is a family-owned and operated one-stop shop for everything that you're probably already looking for. And if you're not looking for it, you should probably still visit the website because you'll find something you want. They've got great shirts, hoodies, beer koozies, they got custom-made rings and jewelry, they can do custom woodwork, signs, leather work. They have farm-to-table bread, candies, and confections. I almost forgot the word for farm right there. That was silly, and I have no idea why. (laughs) I got it now. Look, here's the thing. Everything they do is of the best quality, and it's all literally handmade. Handmade. Not chintzy stuff. Like, high quality. Hand crafted yeah you could say yeah if you so chose they do they choose they did they do (laughs) that's true look the value is there the quality is there and everything they do is awesome and if you don't believe me fine i get it i get it nowadays you got to check your sources but what you can do is you can check them out for yourself on facebook instagram twitter or their website fouracrefreedom.com now I was told to let all of you know that they typically only update the website once or twice a year just because they're normally pretty busy, but everything is for the most part represented there. If you get to the website and you're like, ah, here's something kind of like what I'm looking for, but I want something different, reach out to them and let them know. They still take custom orders all year round, even if like something isn't on their website that you see that you're like, I wonder if they could do this, reach out to them too. Vic would be more than happy to help you out and get you exactly what it is you're looking for. That's kind of the reason he started the business. You know, likes to challenge and does great work. Actually, to add to that, I worked with the guy before, so I know he's a good, high-quality worker. (laughs) That's my official stamp of approval right there. (laughs) But maybe, hey, websites aren't your thing and you'd rather go see him in person. How convenient. Christmas Through Lowell will be uh, November 19th, 20th, and the 21st, and Four Acre Freedom will be located at the Green Ridge Realty Building, uh, so you can see them yourself. Check out all their stuff in person, and uh, hang out with them a minute, because they're great people. And like I said, if you don't get a chance to see them there, you can always find them Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, you can check them out at fouracrefreedom.com. High quality, handcrafted. Like that. Feels good on the tongue. (laughs) And speaking about checking people out on their websites, you guys can check us out on Patreon if you want to get involved in that live episode we're going to be doing at the end of this book. Uh, As a little wrap up, we're going to do it over there on December 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern Eastern. time. (laughs) Got it. Nailed it. You just have to join any tier of Patreon to get access. You don't have to Go all out, but you can just be there with us, and we would love to see you. You can also see the rest of the content that we have there for just the the $1 tier. Is it $1? 
One dollar. Yeah, that's yeah. the lowest tier. Yeah, I was just double checking because Nate has been the one doing all of that on the <laughs> websites as per usual. But so we are actually adding new episodes every time that we add an episode here. Every time you hear us talk here, you're going to hear us talk over there more. <laughs> that's right. About what we talked about here. Probably more drunk because it's after. Yeah, well, that typically is the case. Yeah. But so essentially, you guys will get two episodes for just helping us out and supporting us. And um, we think that's fucking awesome. And we're happy to be putting more Patreon stuff out there because you guys deserve it. Yeah, because you're literally carrying the show. All of our patrons are literally the reason that you all get to hear us every week. So they are the true heroes in this story. It's not Richard. Okay, you might think it's Richard, <laughs> but it's actually our patrons. That's the big reveal at the end yeah. of the series. It was actually our patrons the whole time. Yeah, that's the M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> twist at the end. That's fucking great. Richard rips off his mask, and he's actually all of our patrons underneath there. <laughs> we are Legion. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great. All right. Well, I think with that housekeeping taken care of, it's time to get into this chapter. What say you? All righty. Uh, I was going to respond. What the <laughs> fuck? I'm here. As battle erupts outside of the pop, Verna runs into Kaylin and Addie. As it happens, Verna and Addie remember each other from 50 years ago. And they're like friendly with each other. It's all, all good things. Yeah, because Verna apparently has a super good memory, so she can remember, like, every person that she's ever interacted with in that fucking building. Literally so. went blind and still recognized Verna. Oh, yeah, Addie, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's pretty cool, though. I, I'm glad they had a little moment, and we, because at least it leads, like, um, truth to Addie's story, more so, because people, not that we doubted her, but just, like... <laughs> Yes, that happened. She was fucking there. Yes, yeah, that's true. Did we... But we still haven't learned, like, all the details of that situation yet. Not all the details. It sounds like she just went there and learned about shit, studied up, but she wasn't a sister. Like, she wasn't there on official sister business. She was just there studying. So, if you're a wizard, then you get kidnapped and forced to be trained for however long it fucking takes you. If you're a sorceress, you can do like a foreign exchange, uh, like education study system, and then go back to your home uh, yeah. whenever you, you, you feel like it. I guess. You just come in, use the library for a little while and bounce. Okay. In your own time, on your own terms. Sounded like. Oh, okay. Well, I guess uh, that makes it better. Well, she wasn't a prisoner, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> So Kaylin needs to find a Hearn, and Verna needs to find Warren. Then they all need to get the fuck out of here. They decide to meet up with Kevin Andelmere when they're done. The quote-unquote password is a friend of Richard. Yeah, they also call it a code. Yeah, it's a code. He'll understand. Like, that's what? a pretty stupid code. But actually, okay, this is what we were talking about at the top of the show. Isn't that like a really, really bad password? Like, it's literally the name of the enemy at that point. Like, like if you, oh gosh, I'm just so frustrated with it. If it was World War II and your secret passcode was, we hate the Nazis, which is a good thing. But like, you said that to a Nazi, unbeknowing, or unknowingly, like, what's the code? Oh, Nazis suck. Or oh, you're the enemy then. If someone stumbled past you while you were saying the code... They would immediately know what the code was for. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not a code. I guess that was my thing. It's not a code. It's, it's not, not a password. It's not a secret. Yeah. It's, it's a fact. Like, you're just walking up and saying, hey, I like the guy that you like uh, that our enemies hate. We cool? Yeah. Basically. Fuck the bad guy. That's yeah. the code. Yeah. No, me and Jade actually had a conversation at length about that earlier. He's like, wouldn't you want to make it something innocuous? Like, they couldn't determine what it was. It's Butterfly. That would have been much better than any of this. When we were talking about, though, you came up with a better one. Chocolate. Chocolate, that's right. Chocolate and pussy. Yeah. Oh, oh, Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that guy. <laughs> we approve of that. 
Or even flowers. Doesn't he do... He did some... Well, that was for the, like, mostly the Sisters of the Dark, where he was sneaking around, stealing all the flowers from the restricted places. Right. But if it's chocolate and pussy, I mean, yeah. I don't know many people who don't like at least one of those things. It, yeah. I mean, a lot of people do. And it's it's not saying Richard's name out loud right, which in the is middle the most of a battlefield. Thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Addie stays with the sisters as Kaylin dashes off into the night, just as Verna tries to tell her that she could remove the Radahan. Oops. Well, at least they can still remove Addie's, right? Yeah. Well, it's frustrating because it's one of those things where Kaylin is running off and she's essentially pretty helpless. Like, we know that she can fight with a sword or a knife, but she's really crippling herself here. Yeah, Not with- that she knew, maybe. But, but yeah, going off with a Radahan and not having her magic is not great. Right. She's putting herself at a huge disadvantage by having that thing on there. I just don't see why she wouldn't confirm, like, okay, hey, before we all separate and go off into the night, this is what we're doing, right? We're all good with this? Okay, one, two, three, go team, and then go do your thing. Nothing like that. Yeah, well, it's another one of those, like, passion rules, raisins things, because if she had really thought about it, I feel like there's other people who could have been more suited to go rescue a Hearn. Uh, not even if she had the Radahan, not have the, there's fucking sisters. They would not be sus walking through the palace at this point with their magic that they can wield. Oh yeah, and I mean, really, they look just like the sisters of the dark. Yeah, anybody could be anybody. So yeah, anybody could be anybody. Oh, that makes it all so confusing. But yeah, somebody who's less. <laughs> objectively less important than Kaylin. Yeah. As far as maybe just the hierarchy of the Midlands goes, but somebody else should do this. It's not like she's the only person that could go get a Hearn. Yeah. Just insanity. Well, there, speaking of insanity, there is more explosions and craziness happening in the background. It's, it's basically all throughout this chapter, but every once in a while, Terry tosses it in like, oh yeah, there's battle shit happening just to keep that fresh in your mind that they are on a battlefield and all hell is breaking loose all around these characters. Yeah, well, because sometimes you might forget because all the characters tend to stop what they're doing and be like, hey, let's have a chit. (laughs) A chit, yes. (laughs) We don't have time for a chit chat. Yeah, but but they try to. I guess that's the thing. Like They'll have a talk that you're like, "Mm, is this the time? Really? Really, do we need to talk about this right now? Or could we be like, yes, want to talk to you later. Let's fucking go. (laughs) So Addie gets ditched again when Verna heads towards the Prophet's compound. What the fuck? This is twice. Kaylin was like, all right, Addie, I'm going to go do this thing. Why don't you stay with the sisters? And then Verna was like, yeah, I don't really want you with me either. Why don't you stay with them? I'm going to go. She's like, fine, fuck you guys. I guess I'm not part of the team. The only plus side is that once Addie like, is with the rest of the sisters and she can get that collar off, she won't be blind anymore because that would be even worse if you left, like, obviously she's, comp- she's able to, like, function in the normal society as a blind person, but she normally has her vision through magic. Oh, right. That has been taken from her. So she has been literally, like, senseless. Not senseless, but you know what I mean? Missing her biggest sense. But at least you can see, even if she's surrounded by strangers. Yeah, I'll bet Addie would never forget to ask for the Radahan to be taken off like Kaylin did. Like, literally, I can't see. That's all I want right now. It's probably going to save my ass, too. It might save all of your asses. <laughs> yeah. That would be a good thing to ask for. So Verna makes her way through the shields to the prelate's prelate's compound, prophet's compound. She's terrified that she's just going to find his body. It's so weird that they call them compounds in the middle of a palace. Like, it definitely takes it from, like, palace to military um, situation in my head. Like, it's weird because I'm like, oh, I thought we're in a palace. You could just say quarters, but we're saying compound, which makes it a whole fucking different thing in my head. I think maybe it's compound because he's got several, like, areas or maybe small buildings. I don't know, because I remember it being the Prophet's apartments. Yeah. Or Nathan had a very large apartment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know why. 